Kathy's directive on the visual effects was to keep us as grounded in reality as possible. It's kind of a, a weird hybrid stylized reality. It's almost like Pulp Fiction meets Clockwork Orange in a weird way. <laughs> it's just a strange film that has its own voice, which is fun. Harley Quinn does not have supernatural powers like many other DC comic characters. So the goal was to focus on her unique and quirky personality. It's such a specific tone to try to hit. There's so many storylines and the story and the out of order nature of the story. Everything that takes place in this film reflects who Harley is and who she's become. It was definitely her story. Oh shit, is that a hyena in a bathtub? I named him Bruce after that hunky Wayne guy. Once we're actually in pre-production, it was like the biggest conundrum we had was how do we shoot these scenes with a hyena? No, yes, baby. Early on, we actually went out to Palmdale, which is about an hour from here, and met up with some animal trainers that actually had a hyena. Uh, learned about how dangerous it would actually be to have on set. And apparently, if this hyena touches anything, it considers it to be his. So we're like, OK, can he sit on a couch? And they're like, yes, but then it's his couch. Like, he will eat it. And if someone tries to take it away from him, he'll, like, eat you. It was an interesting challenge because, at first, everyone was very nervous about having a CG creature in the film. We had a dog, a big, big, big dog. Margot and Kathy were saying, actually, we want to be able to touch him and really kind of interact with him, because they wanted to kind of build a relationship. It wasn't just, hey, there's a hyena. They actually wanted to, she wanted to kind of stroke his face. Once the shots were selected that would have Bruce in them, those plates were turned over to Weta, and Weta would begin by tracking in the CG model that they would have already created so that his movements matched the movements of our stand-in German Shepherd. That was really important for us, to get the performance from the real animal. I did a lot of, like, miming, acting, like, hello, Bruce. Hello. But for, for a lot of it, I actually had a dog to interact with, which was great. <laughs> Birds of Prey focuses on an area of Gotham that is a little more seedy and far less stylized than other superhero films. You know, KK, at the beginning, he had brought out a, a mood board that kind of showed the different feelings of the film, dirty alleys and very specific costume designs and haircuts and things like that. It really kind of set the tone for it, so that was something that was very specific to the way Kathy wanted to do it. Ace chemical sequence was basically where Harley and Joker formed her personality when she fell into the giant vat of acid. So it was very symbolic, and it was a nice little kind of way to start the movie with a bang, so to speak. I have the best idea. For the visual effects team, as we developed the Ace chemical sequence, we went through many, many reference photos of chemical plants and refineries all throughout the world. There's a bunch of different kind of like oil factories and things like that here in Los Angeles that we went and we took a lot of photographs to kind of get all the details. We also referenced images of crazy explosions and powdery type fireworks so that we could take elements of all of those references and build them into this one shot showcasing Harley's grand statement to Gotham. It's, you know, just a huge explosion, bigger than you've ever seen. I know, a great taco spot. Oh, I love stop. tacos. Really? For the Canary Cry sequence, we actually did quite a bit of research looking into both comic book frames and looking through some of the TV work and other film work that's been done. The Canary Cry was, uh, it kind of went through some interesting evolution in terms of what it was going to be in the film. It was originally going to be a much more sonic thing, where it was just kind of sound and we didn't see anything. But, you know, as we were putting things together, everyone was kind of feeling they just wanted to see a little something. It's the supersonic cry and the waves, but the physicality, the strength that's housed inside of her body was something that I wanted to incorporate into the Canary Cry. Again, our friends at Weta stepped up to execute the work on these shots, utilizing some of the stunt elements that had been shot on set. It ended up getting much more tangible in post, you know, just to really kind of sell it and really kind of hit it hard. There was a suspension of time and imagery as it kind of initially was blowing 
going back, and everyone kind of felt they wanted more of a visceral punch, more of a violence. Like when it first comes out, these waves actually pancake the the, the soldier guys, the, the mercenaries, and actually knock their weapons out of their hands, refracting the air and creating this this pathway for Harley to kind of escape out of the funhouse and chase after the Rolls Royce. I'm proud of so many of the shots in the film because I feel that they represent Harley's very quirky, off-center personality. Margo was great. She was always involved. She would even come making sure things are going well, however she could help. Her and Kathy obviously worked together collaboratively on this, but you know, based on the way we were shooting this, we always wanted everything grounded in reality. Everything just kind of came together, which was great. It created a lot of exploration in the edit, so yeah, it was really fun.